Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to this episode of Passionately Motivated, the series where we interview some of the world's most inspiring people and find out what makes them passionate and keeps them motivated. My name is Morpheus Young, aka The Creative Alchemist, and I'll be your host for today. Our goal with the series is to inspire you to follow your dreams and step into your purpose. That one thing that keeps you present and in tune with yourself, we want to motivate you to pursue it. So whether it be art, fitness, gaining, dancing, design, if you enjoy doing it, you can turn it into a lifestyle. We are dreamers, not realists. We believe limits are only set as far as the mind can conceive. So be limitless stay passionate and get motivated because on this episode we're going to be interviewing my friend uzoma i actually met uzoma a few years ago at a fitness pop-up event in houston texas to a lot of people uzoma is a huge inspiration when it comes to fitness he's actually a classic physique ivb pro bodybuilder you might have seen him go viral a few years ago for that cool thing he can do with his chest and his legs one thing about uzoma that stands out to me is his passion to push the human body to its limits the dude loves to optimize his physical capabilities not only is he a master when it comes to fitness but he enjoys breaking dancing and graffiti art as a form of expression so let's tap into this episode to learn more from uzoma and his journey and like always stay passionate and get motivated what's going on thanks so much for being here bro thanks for having uh, me bro i really value our friendship i know we met a few years ago at the gym shark pop-up in texas yeah and like we connected you me Ra, and like there was a synergy it's like there's like despite how many people were there like i feel like we just naturally gravitated towards you're each just other. too cool bro yeah no, i just looked at you cool, i looked at you i was like he's got you there's a lot of things that i admired in you man like your stillness you were just very comfortable around everybody i could just like see the confidence that you had and you were just so you I appreciate and that's that. something that i i really admire and i was i'm just observed when i when i see that like skill in people or that like that in people i admire it and it's because i want to just get it in me too like you know it's one of those things nah likewise bro like, you, you inspire me and like your, your, your you. work ethic from like your fitness your mindset because obviously you can't have a certain physique without a certain type of mindset so we'll tap into that but before we even get started like i just want to thank you for your patience because i know we've been going back and forth about being here right now for like probably a few months maybe even a year and like things were happening that were outside of our control yeah but now we're actually here no yeah it happened perfectly it <laughs> yeah. happened perfect it wasn't i wasn't um in a rush or anything like that. I think it just happened how yeah, I was supposed bro, and to. That displays mad character from you, bro. And um, yeah, just thank you for being here. And I'm excited to like create a place where we can tell your story, bro. Mm -hmm. And also just share many layers of you. Cause I think people just see you for like your fitness side. They definitely and, do. And, and there's so many layers to you. you yeah, know? I definitely haven't shown those layers. It's always been fitness, low key. Yeah. Cause I've been kind of growing into, you know, I used to feel like I was a shy kid and stuff. and. I don't really feel that way anymore, but I kind of see why I only did do fitness. I kind of, I, I kind of limited myself to one lane and felt like I had to just be there. And now I kind of feel like I'm growing out of it, and I want to, uh, you know, just share those other layers that you speak of. Facts, and we'll talk more about that. But I'm really curious, how did you start on your fitness journey? Like, what, what, like, initially got you to realize, like, damn, I actually want to start pushing my body. So I remember I used to work at In and Out from like 16 years old to 20 years old. And I remember I was working at In-N-Out and I was like, man, you know, I'd be working there. Sometimes it'd be, it'd get late, it'd be like 11 p.m. and I hadn't hit the gym yet. I haven't gotten my meals in yet. And I remember saying like a sentence to myself, like, man, I wish I knew just like, how far could I take this if I could just put all my energy into the fitness? So it was like when I was 17 or, or so is when I really upped the fitness. But if I had to rewind it and say when I really first got into it, it must've happened when I used to wrestle in high school even before then, I always wanted a six pack. So it kind of spawned like I wanted a six pack, got into football, then I got into wrestling and then I'm weight training and I'm, I'm good at it. Like I'm getting muscle really fast. I'm getting muscle. I even tell my wrestling coach like, hey man, I'm getting muscle a little too fast. Like I don't want to be that super big guy. And I was telling him how scared I was of lifting. But I just kept on doing it because I realized, hey man, as long as you're natural, you won't really get out of like this frame that, you know, you're in your God given frame. You're never going to get like too freaky big. So I was like, man, just keep doing it. You're good at it. And I kept doing it from wrestling and weightlifting. But then it was that moment at In-N-Out where I was like, I wonder how, like, if I put everything into it and I didn't have to worry about coming to work and doing all this stuff, like, I wonder how far I could take fitness. It kind of like that's how it kind of yeah. started. So you've pretty much been an athlete your whole entire life. And it sounds like and then kind of when you stop like being on teams and doing wrestling stuff, you kind of just transitioned more to it was It was that point at 17, because I realized it wasn't just like lifting weights. It, that's when it clicked to me that it's like, no, this is like, it's mind-muscle connection. Like, you know, you activate the right muscles. There's a, it, it's different, it's a skill. 
And that's what I noticed. It's like, I'm good at this. I get this. Everybody else is kind of just going through the movements. They're lifting weights. I was like, nah, this isn't even about like working out. This is about like connecting to the right muscle and just making sure you're doing it right. And then I felt like I was really good at that. So I kept getting results, kept going up. And eventually, you know, I'm identifying with the gym. It's all I do. It's something that makes me feel like I'm on track. Because sometimes I don't feel like I'm on track in life. Like when I was in school, I got good grades, but I didn't know what I was going to do in college, what I was going to do. But when I was going to the gym, it always made me feel like, yo, that's something you got going. Mm. So subconsciously, it was like the only good thing. It was almost like a drug that was just like, if you got nothing else going on, bro, this for sure might be able to take you forward in life. I feel that. And it keeps you in tune. I feel like just being someone who's on top of your fitness and your, and your workout, it helps you outside of that. So I can't imagine how life would be if you didn't work out. I feel For like sure. Just like be like, what the fuck? Cause that's how I feel like when I don't work out. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's bigger for me too. It, it, I know you're not supposed to just like have like, you don't want to just be like, that's my identity. But like, you know, I can't even help it. The part of it is just what I want to do. Like that's part of it almost. It, it actually is a part of my character for what I want to do in my life. Mm -hmm. From what I'm understanding, it's like your your gift, bro. Like like your gift because like I've been watching your journey from when you started calisthenics and how much progress you've made, bro, mm -hmm. and like how much progress you're gonna continue to make. And it's like you're just learning it so fast. And like, what do you think is like the the mindset behind that, or how how can someone go from like not being able to do an Elsa or or a traditional calisthenic move to just you know, manifesting it. Yeah, so what I've come to realize, like the same mind-muscle connection that you have in bodybuilding, like weightlifting, if you're trying to isolate your bicep and you wanna just feel your bicep, not your shoulders and your whole arm, you just wanna isolate your bicep or chest, you just wanna get your chest. That same technique of understanding how to activate, activate that individual muscle is the exact same like awareness. I call it mind-body intelligence. Mm. It's, it's an intelligence of its own. It's something that you kind of can't even teach other people unless you go on the journey yourself and in the field. Cause like, how do I tell you to feel for like a certain air? Like, yo, you gotta open your hips up or you gotta, you're like, what does that even mean? You're like, you know, you don't really know exactly what that means. You gotta go find out what the hell that actually means to your body. So once you get that relationship with it, you know how to turn these muscles on or get these muscles activated and feel for it. That's the key. You gotta make sure you understand that technique and then you gotta use that technique through ranges of motions with uh, added resistance to it. And that's, the gift that you're talking about, I think that, that I have, but I think everybody has it or has the ability to tap into it because it's literally a body intelligence. Like if you have a body and you start, you know, stretching and working out or whatever, and you're just being very in tune with it. It's not just going through the motions. Find out why this is important. Like find out why you need to activate these muscles. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a journey for you to go on and figure out and it's deeper than what it seems. But once you figure it out, I feel like the progress is like unlimited. So it's almost like that's the foundation to like success when it comes to training. Then. When it comes to training, yeah, it's a, um, we talked about it a little bit yesterday. It's more of like a practice. Instead of going in there like, yo, I'm trying to work out. You need to practice how to activate muscles at will. And you need to be able to use that form and take it through a range of motion. And that's what you're practicing, how to activate those muscles and take those muscles through a range of motion. And then you're simply just adding resistance to it with the weights. Mm -hmm. So it's like, find that perfect curl without any weight. Find it, okay, I feel the contraction of the bicep, I feel it stretching. Oh, this is all bicep right here. Now you need that, add 10 pounds to it. Do that exact same thing. You, you've mastered that, add 20 to it. And key, it has to be that every time, because that's what you're practicing. You're not practicing lifting 50 pounds, you're not practicing lifting 40 pounds. You're practicing activating that muscle through a range of motion. And that's the same thing you're doing in yoga, that's the same thing you're doing in calisthenics. With the L-sit, you're activating all these muscles through a range of motion. You just need to make sure you're activating the right muscles and strengthening that set of, you know, those components. Yeah, so it's, that's what it is. That's how anybody can become a master at. What you just described, you'd consider that like mind muscle intelligence, right? Yeah. It's a mind muscle intelligence for yeah. sure. So like, was that something that just came naturally to you or like, did it happen by accident? Like, cause I get what you mean. And I feel that with certain body parts, like I feel it in my chest or like my arms sometimes yeah. not so much in my, my delts, but like for you, like when was, when and how did you start to realize that? Cause that seems to be like the pinnacle of like the growth. Yeah. You know? So what it is was um, you just gotta be very mindful and you gotta be smart and you gotta connect dots. So this is what I mean by that. In lifting, let's say you did a set of 10 reps. Let's say you was doing some lat pull downs or something. And you'll be like, man, why did three of those feel amazing? But the other seven didn't feel 
as good. You know, I felt him, but those first three or those three where I really focused on, you know, squeezing and going slow on the negative, whatever, those felt way better than the other seven. So right there, you have to realize that while there's a way in which you can do these reps that are way more effective, and I think you were just being more mindful on these reps and you were doing certain things that made these more effective than those. So now it's like you need to increase the frequency of the good reps. It's not about just doing 10 reps or 20 reps. It's about doing the ones with the good, the good reps. You need to increase the frequency of those. Those are the only ones that really count. So it became that. And if, like, if that's to be true in that situation, it must be true in your calisthenic situation. It must be true in your yoga situation. And you know what I'm saying? That's pretty much what yeah. it is. And one thing you said to me yesterday that like really stuck out to me and I want to bring to the table today is like the difference of like starting your journey in different levels. Cause we were talking about calisthenics and you were talking about like that one guy who was like doing the handstands and you were like kind of telling him not to lean on the wall. And mm -hmm. then um, you're saying how your one friend was like, nah, let him do it his own way. And everyone's yeah. like, can you talk a little bit more about that? Cause I feel like sometimes when people start their fitness journey or like want to take care of their health, like, they can be discouraged because maybe whoever's teaching them, they're, they're doing it in the way that worked for them. And then they try it the same when it doesn't work for them, you know? So like if yeah. someone was like embarking on their fitness journey and really wanted to like get their body right, how would you encourage them to prime their mind and what kind of action should they take to move forward? So with what we were talking about yesterday, we were talking about how everybody's journey, like fitness journey can be different. Like some people, for example, me, we, we can specifically talk for calisthenics you know, cause I'm a big guy, I had the muscles. So I didn't have like all the mobility and flexibility and certain like body, there was certain body awareness I didn't have for calisthenics. It's different because I feel like calisthenics is a lot more compound. You need like everything to work together. Bodybuilding, you can do a lot of isolation stuff. So I didn't know how to make my body work together as a whole. So, but I still started my journey. So in, so in my situation, I didn't have the best like full body connection, but I'm like, man, I still got to start. So I'm going to try it. And even though my technique may not be the best, I'm still like building a lot of strength, even though it's bad form, I have a lot of strength. So what I'll need to do is then fix my form. So it's like, you got the strength, now you need to fix your form. Other people I said were, they might fix, they might start with really good form first, but then they are working to get their strength. So everybody has to like, you know, figure out their range and figure out their balance. Um, but the best thing is to just to start because there's no right or wrong way. Whatever you're missing in your journey, you can always go pick up later. Facts. And what's cool is the things that you were like, once you go pick that thing up, you'll realize everything is now connected. Like I got the strength now. I got this. The only thing I was missing was the form and the balance. Now I got that. And it all will just come together and everybody's on their own different journey. But if you just continue, I feel like everybody can still get there because mm -hmm. people were telling me like, yo, man, Oh, that's not how you do a handstand. You're banana backing and you're this. And that might have been like a year and a half ago, but it's like, what do you want me just to stop? Should I just stop because my form's not good or whatever? No, I kept going. And now a year and a half later, you might not be able to tell me my form is bad. It might be better than yours now because I kept going. Mm -hmm. So the main lesson is just keep going. Wherever you got to start, you know, that's cool. That's just your starting point. You're going to get to the middle. You're going to keep going. You're going to eventually get to the end. And everything's just going get, to get nice as long as you keep going. Mm -hmm. No, that's well said. And I agree, like how I look at it in my perspective, when you were explaining yesterday, I, I see it as like we're avatars in the matrix right now. We all have our different stats. Someone may be stronger. Someone may have more agility. Someone may have like, I don't know, more better form, you know? For sure. So it's like be grateful with what your stats are and don't compare like what someone else's stats are and just work on your weaknesses, but also embrace your strengths. That's how I look at it in the gym. Because mm -hmm. when I first started working out, I used to be self-conscious because I started off very scrawny. And I used to find myself comparing people. But then I realized, like, I'm very good with my form and I'm very good with my posture. I just need to be more consistent and eat more and not compare myself. Because when you start comparing yourself to other people, you start to take away from your gift and your own strength. So it's like comparison is like the biggest downfall. And that's, yeah. that's one of the things I took away. Just keep going. Keep keep that momentum going. Keep striving. Because I feel like sometimes if we don't get results, especially now in the information age where like mm -hmm. shit is like dopamine, dopamine, dopamine. It's like we're subconsciously conditioned to yeah. like want to get shit fast. Oh, it's it's a lot harder these days for sure. Even for, for me, like I've noticed the gym is, is a bit harder because you have your phone and that gives you so much dopamine that you got to be like I'm gonna put this down and I got to go work out to get maybe even less dopamine than that you know what I mean so it's like you got to go grind for less dopamine than something you could just get more dopamine from right away and I've noticed that and I've kind of anticipated that as a struggle for like generations yeah, it's a challenge to come. for sure man and you don't get it's like you don't get the instant gratification in the gym I feel like with the no. gym the results are like compounding it's like you're you maybe your reps and your strength goes up but your physical 
um, attributes won't change till later. It's like almost there's a lag. It's like you get the results in the reps in the workout, but then your physique is going to change slowly. It's like, yeah. I feel like just doing what you said and just staying consistent is going to yeah. help that. That's, that's something I've noticed that's a little different about me too. I don't really go to the gym, at least bodybuilding wise. And I know it's going to sound weird, but I've never really been too result orientated with the gym. Really? When it comes to calisthenics, yeah, it's because like, I want to be in yoga. I want to be flexible and I want to be strong. So I'm pretty like result orientated with that. But when it came to bodybuilding, bro, it was almost like I didn't even have to think about the results. It was like, bro, if I go in that bitch and hit these muscles, how I'm describing with the mind muscle connection, like I know what the byproduct of that is. Like I'm going to walk out here with a pump. I'm going to get bigger. And, and then also I'll even say this, you ever be like when you're in high school or you're in school and you go to a, uh, your class, it might be like a cute girl in the class. You may not even ever talk to her. But you know when she's not there, like you feel it. Like, dang, she not there today. Yeah. Like, I wasn't even gonna say nothing, bro. But yeah. she not there. It's just she makes your class fun. Yeah. That's yeah. how the gym was for me. I won't say you shouldn't be result orientated, but I think with something like fitness, bro, it's best to turn it into like a lifestyle because you don't know when the results are gonna come. It, it can take so long. You know, it just takes a long time. I find it better just, I'm not even worried about it, bro. I'm doing the right things. I know it's going to come. Embrace man. the journey, not the destination. The journey is the prize. Yeah, the journey is the prize. Can you share with us a moment in your life? Maybe it's fitness related, maybe it's not, but something that happened that you feel it's like a catalyst that helped you develop your character. Like, is there a certain moment or experience or interaction that helped you grow as a person, you know? Man, there's got to be, there's got to be a ton. I think, I think the first thing is probably wrestling. It's probably wrestling because my experience with wrestling was I wanted to quit after the first year. I never liked wrestling. I was scared of every single match. I thought I was gonna lose every single match. There was nothing fun about it. Like every time we get on the bus to go leave to a school to go wrestle, I'm like, man, I hope they forget who's Oma. I hope, I hope like, like what if I leave my headgear in my singlet? Like, will I not have to wrestle? But you know, the coach will be like, I got a headgear in the singlet for you right here, bro. You gotta, so it was always like, that was a stage in my life where, how should I say, like doing something you don't want to do repeatedly. Yeah. I think that built a lot of character just like, because I'm telling, I thought I was going to lose every match, bro. So that means, and the reason I thought it, because I'm like, I'm really buff. Yeah. So I had this, I felt like I had this expectation, like, yo, that kid with the muscles is going to whoop everybody. And I've always had a level of expectation on myself that is kind of false. Like, I don't even know people are thinking that, mm -hmm. but I just kind of intercepted it and said, that is what's going on. And I noticed it in, in that time, that I would do that. And yeah, put a lot of pressure on myself. So, so my thing with wrestling was like, I'm sure I got a lot of character building from that. I learned a lot of discipline to stick with things. It, it was the one thing that I walked into the room, didn't know what the, like, what the hell's going on here. But then by year four, I'm like, this is my place. Like I know, I, know, I know how to do this now. So it was one of those things where I actually saw progression. It was probably one of the first things that I did for four plus years. And I'm like, you can get good at something, even if you know nothing about it. So there was that. I remember giving a speech. I was in a communications 101 class in college. And like I said, I had this expectation. Like I felt, I'm saying this very humbly. This is how I, just how I felt about myself. I felt like I was a good looking kid. And I felt like girls would think that I got game or something. But I didn't have any of that shit. Like I was shy as shit. I didn't, you know, I just felt like that's what people thought of me. Like, yo, this kid, he's good looking. He's gonna, he's, he should kill it. Like he's gonna, he's gonna kill this speech. And I'm just like, oh. God, they all think I'm gonna kill it. I'm nervous as hell. <laughs> and we had to do three speeches for that semester. The first one, I completely cheated. I didn't know I was cheating, but you weren't supposed to read the speech word for word at the paper. That's what I was doing. The second one, I'm like, all right, I'm not gonna cheat. I'm gonna actually try this. So I memorized my speech word for word. I had it memorized, practicing it all the way up to that class. I could say it out loud or I could say it in my head. But as soon as I got to that podium and I looked everybody in their faces, I forgot the whole speech. Damn, you like blacked out, huh? I just forgot it. I forgot it all. Like, and it was a sensitive speech too, because it was about police brutality. So I was like, I need to like say the facts right. <laughs> and <laughs> it really wasn't coming out right. And everybody, I'm looking at kids look at me in the crowd. They're like, like they're all just like, Ooh. <laughs> they're hurting in the back. And I'm like, I am fucking up. But once it ended, I'm like up there and I'm just kind of like laughing at myself. I'm embarrassed, embarrassed. Um, but I just find my way to sit back down and then the next person goes up. And I'm like, that's it, like it's over. You just did the worst possible thing in your mind that you could do, bro. You just bombed this shit in front of everybody. And they're all looking at you cringing. And, 
in just 10 more seconds, bro, it was over, you know, and the next person goes and they're probably more worried about their speech and they're worried about me and things like that. So I don't know, it just helped me like take pressure off myself and just realize things like. With those two experiences, what was like your takeaway? For the first one with the wrestling thing, you said like you had fear going into the matches and you almost didn't want people to notice you. And I've been there, mm -hmm. um, I've been there too. It's like, you, I'd rather be home, honestly. Yeah. Um, but like, what was it that got you past the fear? And what was like your biggest takeaway from both those experiences, you know? So I never got past the wrestling fear. That one went forever. Um, senior year got better because I was actually got the skills and I'm like, yo, I'm probably gonna beat these guys. Even if I think I'm gonna lose, I'm probably gonna win. Yeah. So even when I thought I was gonna lose, I still won. It was just my thing. I always I thought I was gonna, before I even saw the kid, the kid could be scrubby and terrible. I'm just like, ah, I think I'm gonna lose, but I go whip his ass. It's just how I was. So that one, I don't really know. All I can say is I learned from that is, hey, you're a tough kid. You never once wanted to go out there and you did it. And I seen other kids make excuses. You wanted to make the excuses, you actually did it. So it was almost like, man, you, you there was a lot of fear, but hey, without fear, there can't be courage kind of thing. So I could take that from that. The embarrassment with the speech, was like, look, bro, they're more, they're worried about what they got to do. And you just bombed it. You did the worst thing you could possibly do. And look, you're still standing. You're just fine. You, you, you can actually even laugh a little bit. You think it's a little funny. Mm -hmm. So like humility. the worst thing, it's like humility. Yeah. It just sets you free. You got to humiliate it, bro. And look, you're still fine. Nothing, nothing happened. So all that expectation, all that stuff that you're thinking, oh, they think this, they think, look, it just happened. It just fell in your face and nothing happened to you. You're just fine. What would you, would you ever put yourself in that situation again where you would have to do a public speech? Like, do you feel like you feel more comfortable? Only a couple things really make my heart race. <laughs> public speaking, um, like a wrestling match. And you know what, sometimes like hitting a PR with a lift or something, like I just get nervous, like, oh God. But you know that this public speaking might go back to being, uh, when I was like six years old, I did a spelling bee and I also bombed it on stage. I was so nervous, I misspelled the word bolt. Mm. B-O-L-T, I spelled it B-U-L-T because I was so nervous. I knew what it, I knew how to spell that. I just said bolt, bolt. I was like bolt, <laughs> bolt, B-U-L-T. And I was crying up there and I was so nervous. And that day too, I wanted them to forget the spelling bee. I was like, I hope the whole school, it was like 30 minutes left of school, I was like, I hope they forget that it's the day and they just send us all home. So I've always had that kind of in me. And yeah, I, I think I'm definitely better with it now. I've definitely grown, like this is kind of like, hurdles that I definitely feel like were more so in the past and I've overcome a lot of them and yeah I would love to uh step up to the plate with those things that make me feel like kind of scary because now I'm kind of operating like yo without the fear there's no courage like there's no chance to be brave so now it's like all that fear is mad normal it's just nature it's an opportunity to you know manhandle that shit so I like it now, actually. Yeah, we have to go towards fear is what I learned. And to share some of my experience, like I actually had the same exact experience with public speaking. And I know that I'm destined to do public speaking even more in my life and I'm a good communicator. But there was this one time um, when I was working at this incubator, I got called out to go speak at this university called Towson. And went all the way out there, got asked to speak about fitness and entrepreneurship and um, pretty much content creating as a fitness employee at the time. And I froze up, bro. I literally froze up and I, and I have the footage, I have it and I look at it and I can't even watch it sometimes because I'll cringe like halfway yeah. watching because it takes yeah. me back in that moment. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, what the fuck was I doing? And, and, and I see like all these college students looking at me and they, they're in my mind, I'm like, damn, how the fuck do they see me? And like, they're probably expecting me to drop all these gems, which I, I could have done. Uh, but I was, in my mind, I kept thinking about what can go wrong. And I kept thinking about how they per perceive me. So I'm like looking around, I'm like, uh, and then I like, yeah. I literally froze and just like went like this for like mad long. And then I took a deep breath. And I was like, yo, you guys, I fucked up. I literally just told them all and then they started laughing. And then like one of the guys in the audience like was kind of supportive and then they all started being more supportive. And then I got back into flow and then yeah. like finished it off strong. But like nice. the first like five minutes felt like an hour, bro. It's and and yeah, it was just a crazy yeah. takeaway for me. <laughs> and I realized my biggest takeaway from that experience was like just one, Think positive thoughts to yourself, no matter what. And you have to envision the experience or event that you're going into, going the way that you want it to go before going into it. Mm -hmm. Cause what I did wrong, I kept thinking it was gonna go wrong. And that's why I went wrong. So it's like, I manifested that self-fulfilling prophecy. So um, if I was to do it again, I would think more positive. I would have more bullet point notes and be more prepared for it. And I would just be extra confident in myself and know that God or the universe put me exactly where I'm meant to be in that time and yeah. just know that I deserve to be there because I feel like sometimes when we're growing and, and the universe puts us in certain situations, we have 
imposter syndrome and we feel like we don't belong there and sure. it's like we're, we're we're battling this constant reality of like who we want to become and who we were in the past and we're in the middle and we have a decision to go with our higher self or our lower self and, but, mm -hmm. but because our ego is so conditioned to like doing what's the norm it's going to always try to pull us back to like hey you don't want to be confident yeah. hey you don't want to speak you don't want to dress nice you don't want to talk to that girl you're not good enough so it's like these voices keep mm -hmm. popping up and like we have a an option to either say fuck you i'm not listening to you i'm gonna listen to my higher self or we have an option to like to like hurdle win and go yeah. and i feel like the comfortable thing is to hurdle win but what's actually going to help us become the best version of ourselves is to like just like go with the hard shit and yeah. same thing with the gym and that was my takeaway from it so i feel a lot of what you're saying yeah. and i resonate with that and this is powerful as well this is actually the the one of the lessons that i just learned recently that's been helping me and giving me a lot of power is uh is storylines stories everybody has a story so if we use that speech example so let's say their storyline is yo this guy's gonna go give a speech let's say they think you're nervous or something or they have expectate let's say they have whatever expectation of you they have so in their storyline a guy's gonna give a speech whatever expectation they have that's what they're expecting in their story but what's your story What's the book that you picked up? You didn't pick up their book. Facts. If you do pick up their book, then you're gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna be this guy that's, I'm giving a speech today. They think I might be a little nervous. They're expecting this today. There's, they have this whole catalog of what they're expecting. It has nothing to do with your story. You need to pick your book up and define who you are. Yo, I'm giving a speech today. I'm giving a speech about this, and this is what we're about to talk about. Yeah. And that's what your story is, but this is what I'm doing. So you need to be the character that does that and whatever uh, needs to be backed up by that character and boom, 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 boom. You don't need to pick up the books of the audience of what they are projecting onto. You pick up your story and you tell the story that you are telling. That's beautiful. And that is what's been helping me a lot. Cause I, in the past have- Picked up other I'm a people books. pleaser. Not anymore, not anymore. I was a people pleaser. So I always felt like before I even say anything, I got, oh, well, this might be taken this way, this might be taken this way, this could be taken that way. And I'd freeze, this person thinking this and this. But that's me, that's me living your story. But when I pick up my book, I get to decide who I want to be. And you get to decide if you want to listen to my story, if you don't want to listen to it. But this is the story that will be told on this side. If you don't want this book, don't get it. You can get that book. You don't have to read it. We didn't need you anyway. That's very powerful, bro. And I feel that even with where I'm at in my life, because I feel like people can have a perception of you and they try to tell you you're this and you're that. And they only know you from certain experiences, but they don't really know you know you. And then sometimes like if, if a person is at a specific part in your life, you can take that to like, you take it into, you take it in in a way where like you almost accept it, but mm -hmm. deep down you know it's not true. And exactly. then you start to embody what they say is it's you. their and, story. And, yeah. And that's their bro, book I, I That's not to your book. Continue doing what you're doing and maybe by step 15, bro, they'll understand. Yep, exactly. Maybe by step 30, they'll understand. Maybe by step 100, they'll, they'll understand it. Maybe because your first impression is not what it was. Like you could walk to the room and they're like, oh, this guy's cocky. And I'm like, I know you think I'm cocky. But maybe if I continue to do what I'm doing, I just keep doing what I'm doing, you realize, oh, he's not, this is what he does. Mm -hmm. Like, I got a friend, bro, he just, he's so rugged and raw, bro. He be in the gym, he just take his shirt off, he just walk in. You can't even judge him because he doesn't judge himself. Mm -hmm. You just, it's just dead energy. You look at him, you just gotta accept what he does because that's just what he does. And it's like, he knows what you're thinking. He's not stupid. Mm -hmm. He knows you're thinking, man, this guy's at the gym, he's absurd, he's this, but he's just, he's onto his next workout, bro. He's onto his third workout. You just still looking at him. He's not picked up your story. He doesn't care about what you think. It's not gonna stop what he does. And maybe, and guess what? Maybe by like 30 minutes in, bro, or you've seen him for a week now, and you're like, yo, I thought he was just some asshole, but no, he just gets down like that. This dude is rugged. He's just raw like that. That's what, so he gets down. So just cause your first impression was, look where you're at by, uh, you know, round 20, you are motivated by this guy. You admire this person. So, so what if he stopped because he knew what you thought? What if he was like, man, they all think I'm cocky right now. My shirt's up. He's just like, I don't, I don't even see y'all, bro. I'm doing this because I do this. This is my book. I'm the, I'm, I'm the character in the book that's just going to do this. What's, what's, what's your book look like? I can't do this. I'm the bad guy. I'm that. That's y'all book. I don't even read that book, bro. I'm a savage in this book, and I'm just trying to become the strongest human being I can be. That's what my book is about. What's your book about? What's your book saying about me? That's not even what it is. You don't even know what it is. My book is I'm doing this. And bro, I don't need you to read my book. I'm doing my book. Like somebody's gonna read it. Somebody's gonna peep it. If it wasn't true, we, we didn't need it. Like I'm trying to, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, a thousand percent. It's, what I'm taking away is just be authentic with you no matter what, because 
if you compromise your authenticity and how, you, like you said, it's dead energy. If you and that comes from like our zero point, the universe. Like everyone expresses a type of energy, so it's like do not compromise that because if you compromise that, you're gonna be taking yourself out of alignment from your destiny. So that's always how, compromised. That's it. How I, I feel like I've always compromised it in a way where I still can like do what I want to do, but I it, but it it's not me fully being free. I have a lot of relationships built off me being a people pleaser. <laughs> And yeah, now I'm not, and I don't, and I don't think, care. What now. do you think um, made like created that shift? Like, when did you like? I right, I'm no longer gonna start re picking up people's books, or I'm gonna write my own story. Like, what was it that you know what created it? Um, I had to walk through like, I had to walk through like hell, bro. So I'm a natural bodybuilder, and I become a professional. Now, to some people, they're like, "How could you be professional? You're natural." A lot of people don't believe that I'm natural. But in my mind, I'm like, man, I'm trying to show you guys that you guys can do this naturally. You can be, you know, you can do a lot of crazy things, brother, like your physique or your, your body is able to do a lot of things. You put your mind to it, you put the work and you can do a lot of things. Granted, of course, you know, some people might have better genetics or certain things. Whatever the case, that's, that's not what I like to look at. I'm like, bro, if you put the right work and you do this shit for 10 years, bro, watch where you land. You're gonna land in a cool spot. I'm telling my story. I'm a natural bodybuilder and I wanna help you guys. I wanna show you guys my workouts. I wanna show you exactly how I've done it so you guys can do it too. The world can be a bad place. You know, we got one chance on here. People can be overweight, lack of confidence, whatever it is, they don't like their, they don't like their one shot here on earth. They're not confident here. Let me make your experience better or try to help it. Let me help you get a physique that you want, something that you're proud of, whatever. You know, cause that's a sensitive spot for a lot of people. Yeah, it's their avatar. Yeah, literally. They want it to be how they want it to be. So that's why I'm like, okay. And what do they say when you're younger? Like. You know, find something, you know, your goal isn't big enough unless it includes the world. Or, you know, how can you help people? So I'm like young coming up, like, how can I help people? I'm gonna be the people pleaser too. I wanna help you guys, all I wanna help. So that's what I'm doing, I'm giving my value, I'm giving my value. And I'm morally doing it right. I'm like, I'm doing this with God. God, this is my gift, this is what I'm doing, boom. So I'm doing right by everything. But then some stones get thrown in your face. Some stones getting thrown, you're not natural, you're lying, you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. You're that. I'm like, no, but believe me, I'm trying to help you. I'm being the people pleaser, I wanna help. Because in their story, you're not natural. In my story, I'm natural, I just need to keep telling my story. Yeah. Their story, you're not natural. I'm like, I'm the people pleaser, I need you to believe me. Please believe me, I need you to believe me. Believe me, believe me, believe me, believe me. You have to believe me. That's your story. I'm being the character in your story. Literally. I'm trying to satisfy that story. And then, <clears throat> so that's that concept. I also felt like I'm a kid trying to hang out with some cool kids and they're throwing stones at me. It's like, that's the fitness industry. I'm trying to win you guys over. Please believe me, believe me. And they're just throwing stones at me. You're not, nah, get out of here. You're not. The. So it's like, I'm a good kid trying to, and <laughs> these are things you know. You know that's not your crowd. It's not your crowd, right? You wouldn't hang out with them. You'd be like, nah, fuck that. I'm not hanging out with y'all. So, so what is it came, that's what it came to me. It's like, man, but it's hard for me. It's like, you do fitness, what you do. You gotta be a part the of community. it. But it's like, nah, you don't. Nah, fuck that. They are not fucking with you and you're doing right by everything. You're doing everything morally right. They're the ones that are wrong. They have no reason to do what they're doing. They're not giving you a chance. So I know where we stand. I know that I'm walking in the light and they're walking with the bullshit. So it's like, dang, I'm really trying to mingle with y'all and y'all just keep throwing stones at me. So it was a combination of both. It was like, you guys stripped me of the people pleaser. I can't even please you guys anymore. I don't want to. You guys are throwing stones at me. I don't want to please you. And then it kind of all, all those things just kind of hit me like, man, you're living their story. You know what your story is. They're throwing stones at you, kid. You know that's not your people. Go where you need it. Go where you love. Go what you're doing. Just tell your story. Yeah, you don't got to associate with them. You don't need nothing from them. And they might need nothing from you. And that's great. We don't need transactions then. It's fine. But I know the story will be heard and read. And I know it will impact some people because it already has. So we'll continue to do that. And if I can't get... The whole fitness, just give me 10,000 of y'all, bro, and we'll, we'll do what we can do. I wish the best for you, though, because this is all about helping everybody get their one chance on earth better. So if you guys are looking and you guys like what you see and you guys like the message, please come on over. But if you're going to be over there just hating, da-da-da, you don't want to reason, da-da-da, just please leave it over there and let us do us and we'll tell our stories and you can pick up whatever book you want to read. We don't care. I feel that. Write your book. Can you share with us some of the things that you do outside of the gym? Like outside of the gym, like how do you like to spend your time? So most of the skills I'm trying to build right now definitely have to do with um, fitness. So a lot of my time definitely goes to it because there's a lot of skills I gotta get. But um, I really like hip hop, man. I love hip hop, I love hip, uh, and not just you know the genre, like music. I want you to think outside of it, more of like a culture, because that's what hip hop is. 
You know, hip hop is about peace, love, unity, and having fun. And how you're supposed to express those ideas, you do it through an action of, it could be emceeing, which is rapping, it could be beatboxing, it could be graffiti art, or break dancing. And I just love that expression because I believe in it, and it's, I think it's a beautiful idea. It's a philosophy, and then you act out the philosophy with your expression, and that's like the picture it can paint. So I think that's beautiful. I love literature. I like to hike and things, but I feel like a lot of my energy goes into just creating a character that has these certain physical skills. <laughs> Maybe other skills that I'm interested could be like making some music, writing. I, I'd like, you know, I like, like the poetry and I like the art. But really, I think most of my time is spent into like just building a character that I can then put into a video, like create content, let that character express all these things and create like film with it. You create an actor with all these skills and then let him go and express and create like that. That's, that's pretty much what my, I'd say my passion comes to. And then the, the, the new things, like if it's music and I like writing and I like these things, it's almost like that's just some extra skills that that character has and he can maybe express himself in a nice way. And it's not just all physical, but it also is all just coming to like build a certain character that has the skills and the passions that I like. But it, it's mainly going to be physical things and like the hip hop elements and a little bit of literature and maybe art, I like art. And is there a piece of literature that you can share with us that you think people should look into? Like, is there anything that you've read or you've been exposed to that like has helped you along your journey? I mean, I can think of a quote, a quote that I do like is, you know, whether you, uh, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. Mm -hmm. Like that's one quote that I think has, has stuck with me for a long time because it's just so simple and it, it does just, envelop uh, a lot of the philosophies that I have. Just like, man, if you think you can do it, you can. If you didn't think you could do it, you couldn't do it either. Because both of those are gonna make you do a certain set of actions. Exactly. And yeah. But as far as books go, I can't, for some reason, I can't even remember a lot of the books that I've read or anything like and that. And what's inspiring you to go down like this yoga route as well as calisthenics? Because before you're saying you had 12, if I remember, maybe 12, 12 plus years of bodybuilding. Like why did you shift and like pivot? Why not just only bodybuilding? During my bodybuilding path, Let's say I started bodybuilding for real, for real when I was 17. That's when it really clicked. I turned pro at 21. So 17 to 21, just four years later, I was able to go pro and do it naturally. A lot of people think that's impossible. So I was like, and what did it take for me to do? All it took for me to do was hit the gym maybe, you know, five days a week, probably on average an hour and 30 minutes a day. And then you got to go home and eat food like the rest of everybody. So in my head was like, bro, look at how you just fucking elevated in four years just from going to the gym an hour and 30 minutes a day. You're doing something that they thought was impossible. <clears throat> so it kind of let me know like, you did something impossible with such little amount of effort and time. Like what else could you do if you put that same amount of effort into other skills? And all it took was an hour and 30 minutes a day. So you can pick like four skills. Like maybe you can go to yoga for an hour. You could go to, uh, do some calisthenics for an hour, and you could go do something else for an hour. And that means in four years, bro, you'll get to the same elevation that you got in bodybuilding. Like you'll get to that pro status in yoga and calisthenics and in this. So it, it kind of opened the realm of possibility to me in a lot of other realms. Because I thought break dancing and doing power moves and controlling your body, doing crazy handstands and things, I thought it was impossible. I thought, was, I thought everybody picks one profession. Like, yo, you're a bodybuilder, you're just a bodybuilder. Bro. You do math, you, you, you're a fucking accountant. That's it, that's all you do. You do this, you do this. I'm like, no, nah, we got time. If humans can get their time back, if you, can, if you can find a way to get your time back and you can put an hour a day into each of these little categories, bro, just like I elevated in four years time to become a pro, imagine what you'll do in these, all, you know, these other sectors. That belief became possible and always, always, always in my mind, ever since a kid, I always have wanted to do like break dancing power moves, like air flares, flares, and just the crazy that, that, that just body mastery and freedom. So that's what my childhood dreams are. But my adult dreams or my teen dreams are like, you got to pick that one thing, that one passion that will never make you feel like you're working. And for that, to me, it was bodybuilding. So in my head and what I've observed in the world, that's what you go all into. So I went all into it, but then I'm like, wait, why do you just got to do one thing? You can do you can do all these things. Specialization is for ants. Human beings can do many things. 
Like pretty much saying like a human being is so complex, bro. Please don't specialize in one thing. A human being can do everything. Now what's the quest? I'm a big jack bodybuilder, but I'm really stiff. Don't have much flexibility, but I got breakdancing dreams. I got breakdancing goals. So it's like, what am I gonna have to do? I'm gonna have to get very flexible. I'm gonna have to, you know, unlock this stone body that's just all locked up because, you know, when you're bodybuilding, you don't stretch, you get, you know, all the, you know, well, you know what comes with that. So I had to go do the yoga to unlock my body. I had to do the calisthenics to strengthen my body to be able to do that dynamic stuff that a break dancer can do. So I'm just on that journey of being like, almost like an anime character, bro. I want the muscles, but I want the, cause they're like, how you got all those muscles, but you can do it. You can be, how you so flexible and you got the muscles and you got the mastery and you can do all this cool stuff. I, that's not possible. I want to be that cause I know it is possible. Cause if you get your time back and you put that work in there, you'll do it. I know what is, I know what you're saying the limit is. It's not, it's not just a black and white, it's a limit. It's like, no, if you do these things, that won't even be a limit anymore. So just open my mind up. I can do anything. You get your time back, you can do it. Why would I just do one thing in bodybuilding? My kid, my childlike nature wants to do all this stuff. And I feel like that's where the passion be at. That's where the quests in life come from is what your kid wanted. I feel like a lot of people these days, they walking around like an online game. He ain't got no quests popping up. They just walking around the game. They ain't even got that quest thing. Like, yo, you got a quest to do. You got a mission, bro. They just be, they don't know what to do with their life. I got a quest going at all times, bro. You can get more flexible, you can get this. You can, yo, that kid wanted you to do this. It's an ongoing, just a long life quest. And I got to hit all those elements to get it. And eventually once I do acquire it, I want to put it into video. I want to be a, an actor, a character that can do all those things. And it's also why I got my hair long. I was like, you're going to have long hair too. You're going to be a free soul, buff soul. You're going to have long hair. And it's, it's just everything I'm just trying to build. Embrace that. I love that, man. And <laughs> it's fun. Definitely keep your inner child alive. That's something yeah. I always preach and will always preach. It's like your inner child knew your soul's purpose from the get. And then like over time, society throws all this shit on us that isn't really us. And we feel like we got to like take these side quests. But not nah, like don't take the side quests. Stay on the fucking actual quest and the yeah. mission and stay true to your soul. And then like remember it because like. People are walking around not knowing what inspires them or what keeps them passionate and more than they that, That's not a good, I know that's not a good feeling. Even if you have, I bet even if you like, cause even if you beat a game, bro. So even like people that are rich and feel mad successful, even if you beat a game and you're rich and mad successful, you don't have those quests popping up, it gets boring. You know what I'm talking about? So that once again, it's like the journey is the prize. Don't just try to go get all, go get mad rich and things like that. Cause watch, you get it. You're going to get it, bro. If you don't have any more quests popping up, you're just going to be that rich dude that's completed the game. And you're going to be just like, so always have some quests. I feel that. <laughs> what, what advice would you give to someone who's trying to grow their social media platform, you know? And also what inspired you to even want to share your journey on social media? Because you could have been just doing all this offline, you know? Yeah. I'll start with, uh, with me, how I got into it. Um, like I said, back in the day, I identified as being shy. I remember being in college and I told myself, just to myself, I was like, bro, you could never do YouTube because you're too shy. And the um, public speaking thing, I was like, you're just, it's not for you. But so I think what really got me into it was I was always going to the gym. I had a day where I was like, man, I want to get my name out there. So I was going to compete and I was going to document my story. I wasn't very confident that was going to work though. I thought it was a very risky move. But I was just posting and I wasn't getting like a lot of love or attention or anything like that. Um, but some guy had shouted me out. His name was Louis Marco and I could do this Alien Games thing where my like chest ripples. And he shouted me out and I even sent him a message. I was like, bro, thank you for the shout out. Cause he got me like maybe 10K Instagram followers. And I was like, bro, thank you for the shout out. Cause I'm not a guy with a lot of confidence. I didn't know what I was going to do. I, I was just trying to do it and then you did it, you, you shouted me out and you know, people are you know, noticing this or whatever. And that's kind of what even made me believe in what I was doing. Before I was just like, I'll do it, yeah, I'll try it. Didn't have the most confidence, but he made me believe like, yo, this shit is possible. They, they like what you're doing like or whatever. Saw you. Yeah, and it actually made me feel like what I was doing was going to work. So then I just kept posting, man. I was just telling my story. But at the same time, it might have been easy for me because he got a lot of reception for me. So now it's like, it's working. Like, you know, it's, I know it's working. Before it was like, I don't know if it's, you know, I don't know, I don't know. And when you know it's working is when like, you'll really kind of put that energy into it. So that's how it felt. Advice for people that are trying to do it, it is tell your story. It's, it's your story. You must be consistent, but that's what it is. It's just telling a story and getting people interested in your story. People care about your story. That's the issue I had back then. I didn't think anybody cared about your story, but no, everybody likes a good story. 
So you just need to tell your story in an interesting, good way and just be consistent with it. Tell your story. What's the who? What's the what? What's the when? What's the why? Where's the where that? Do all that. You know what I'm saying? You got to do that and you just keep doing it. And you, you put it out there. You almost can't fail, bro, because you're constantly putting out there. People are going to see it. Maybe people don't fuck with it, but like eventually people are just going to see it and you just build your community of people that you want to see it. Like something I'm telling myself these days is post for your community. Don't just post for the world. Speak to the people that you want to talk to, and then if people are outside of your community and they like what they hear, they'll come into your community. If they don't really care about it, they'll stay over there. But like eventually, your story is compelling. Your story will be compelling to some people. Some people will relate to it. So that's your that's the people you want to get and you know rock with, and just you know whatever. So tell your story. Be really savvy at what you do. Like if, you, if you're a bodybuilder or whatever, like me, it's like you actually do it, bro. Make sure you're actually hitting the lifts. Make sure you actually have a transformation, you know, so people can follow the story and they know what they're getting into. So you gotta be good at what you do and just tell what you're good at and just have fun with it. It's really all you can do. As much smarts and as much strategy you can put into it, you put into it. Ultimately, it's just like you telling your story, man. You tell it often and you tell it the best you can. I think, yeah, I think that hits home. It's like, tell your story post for your community and, and like give impact service because sometimes I think we can post out of ego like some people like that's, just post that selfies too. or they just post yeah. like materialistic things which is cool because to some people it's incentivizing like to people like me it motivates me but to some people they can be envious or like jealous of stuff like that so I feel like also doing everything you said but and then also on top of that just making sure there's a service behind it and like if you're gonna take people's time from scrolling give them something yeah. like make sure like you're, you're pouring something to them that they can better their timeline. Because if we yeah. go back to the root concept that we're all one and we're all in unison, so like helping each other grow, whether it be through your fitness expertise or like someone else's mindset, like just having different helping ways. Helping is, is the fun. way. Yeah. You, you, even if, even if sometimes like, because I've had the journey where, it, the, the, the way my journey was, it was all help. It was all help. And then I won't even lie to you, I actually got like sidetracked at some point in my journey. It was when I got into Gymshark. Sometimes when I was posting, I felt like I was always forcing a caption. Mm -hmm. And I'd much rather just be like, man, I just wanna post this post shit and get it out there. Yeah. And then, but re in reality, it's like, no, you need to add the value. Cause what, I, what I've noticed is there's two, and both of them actually add value. Cause you can be the guy that just gives, 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 and they'll, they'll take the value from him. But you can also be the guy that somebody just like, like David Laid, he's somebody that I can tell a lot of kids that he's influenced a lot oh, of yeah. like those kids. He's inspirational, um, he yeah. inspires people. So I'll use him as an example. They think he's a cool character. So, so there's characters that can just help, but there's also somebody that you just think is so cool that they didn't even have to try and help you, but you just pay attention to everything they do. And it's just like, wow, like this guy's really cool and you can influence him even if you want to help him or not, like you're going to influence him. So I feel like there's two ways to go about it. And the guy that's mad influential, he can also just be like, yo, here's for real some help content. So I don't think you necessarily have to be uh, one or the other. I think they're both beneficial because even the guy that's just like got all the influence, as long as he's doing cool influential things, like man, I'm just going to the gym and you want to copy after him. And so, so even if he's not like, here's my work, that's what I do. He's just a good role model. Like he goes to the gym every day. I like his story. It's so interesting. And that's also very impactful. So if you can land in that category, that's also cool too. It's all preference. It's all relative. So we kind of covered your story of where you've been and what kind of inspired you to go on your journey. What is something that you wanna bring to life next in your career? The next thing I wanna bring to life, bro, is the idea of mixed fitness arts. I think, and the idea of mixed fitness arts to me is like, you know, there's mixed martial arts. Everybody would choose like one. They'd be like, I'm doing Kung Fu, I'm doing Karate, I'll do Jiu Jitsu, but you can do everything. That's what Bruce Lee, his philosophy kind of was like, no, do everything, you know, take what works. And if it works, use it. If it doesn't work, don't use it. But don't just choose one, do everything. I want to create a, a movement of just like hybrid training all around. Not even just like I'm doing bodybuilding and calisthenics. That's just too, no, fuck that. Do them all, bro. Get the martial arts in there too. Get the yoga, do the calisthenics, do the weightlifting, do them all, blend them. They all, they all overlap. I want a kid to be like seven years old knowing he can do it all, bro. Because then if you do that, Four years later, bro, he could be 11 doing everything. So it's like, let's see what you can do. That's what I want to push, that's a movement. That's like what I want to, uh, that's what I kind of want my legacy in fitness to even be, for sure. That's a big legacy, bro. <laughs> that's I'm a, cool that's with a... it, because it's, it's fun and it's just a journey. There's no pressure, because it's just like you're living an example and you're just showing what you did. I just had one more question. Is there anything that you want to share with the world or with the viewers before we, you know, we wrap things up? All I want to say is peace, love, unity, have fun, believe in yourself, 
you know, tell your story. People care about your story, bro. You've got a place in the world. You've got a place to, there's a place for you to impact the world. So don't run from it. Have some courage. Tell your story. It's for sure going to help people. And it'll be fun for you too, man. But yeah, just, just all encouragement, just love, energy. Go forward, keep pushing, don't stop. Thank you for that. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for your wisdom, bro. Thank like, you. you know, it's you're been you're, fun, you're, you're Thank guided, you. yo, you're a light worker, and it's been a pleasure to have you on, bro. Appreciate you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys tune into the next episode. Like, make sure to follow Zoma down below in the link in the description. And, bro, like always, stay passionate and stay motivated. Yeah, passionately motivated.